key insights that are really exciting to you coming back from this? Well, while we were talking, um, Gil was asking about how all this happened, how all this interest and all this activity around this river in this particular place uh, got going. And I believe Omar was saying how there were all these different groups, um, Sustainable South Bronx, Rocking the Boat, and a few others who had um, uh, the interest of, of, of meeting the river and, and getting involved with it and meeting, meeting people who could help them. And somehow they got together, I don't know the exact process, and their needs turned into a collaboration. Um, I was just thinking about like the non-human collaborators involved because they're an important part of this yeah. situation. The river, the plants, the animals, the water, the rocks, the buildings. The boats. The boats. And I was just wondering what like, the same way that the people had needs and desires to, to be a part of, to connect with the river, what, uh, what kind of needs or desires do you think the non-human collaborators had? Um. Well, maybe I'll start off answer and then see if you, any of the PAs want to yeah. take up from where I start. But I think the, the um, clearest need and what was sort of crying out for attention was the natural river plants and animals who live in it along it. Um, it was a, a pretty significantly depleted place with um, cars strewn through the river with very little habitat for animals to live in with water quality that was far worse than than it currently is. So, I mean, that, that I think was what was, you know, I mean, you grew up in Hunts Point, right? Yeah. So This was never like this before. This was just all trash, basically full of trash, wasteland, all full of bushes, but luckily it was the government farming. This was, this lovely farm was created. Rock and Boat grew more. Rock and Boat used to be just trailers, two trailers. And now it grew to a big facility as well. Andrew was saying, asking me earlier, how can we get kids to get more involved? It's rock and roll. I think as we advertise more, us we get more people, and we have more rock and roll in different locations. That's how we get more people involved, basically in the rivers and other places in the five boroughs that need restoration work as well. There was like an interesting moment in our boat about that, where our captain guide was telling us about the bird monitoring, and he was he was saying, well, you know what you guys do is you'll watch one bird, you'll see where it is, what it's doing, how it's behaving, and you'll write all this down. Yeah. And what it, what struck me is that the first part, I guess just to back up, we're sort of in a way interested in politics. And the first part of politics, or democracy, is asking sort of who's out there, um, and how do we take them into account. And so it felt to me like really profound that you would start by surveying the river and going, who's out there? How do we take these other creatures into account? And then it felt really interesting. He was saying, like, well, now that they're taken into account, how do we have to change our collective and our ideas? And so, I mean, I wonder, like, if you go back to when you were a kid and this is a mess, or it's just overgrown or whatever, like, kind of what curiosity made you, in a way, sort of start to take it to so, uh, Like where you started poking around, or like jumping into, fences. Into rocking the boat more. Where, how, what what was your it. first interaction? Forget about rocking the boat. With the river. With, with the river. Where did you first find the river? Well, actually, um, my stepfather actually once took us down here. And we drove up to so this parking lot. It was like a little parking lot because it was a factory next door. And we went over this little barge type thing of cement, and we walked and saw the river. Along the side, Hunts Point Market has very, certain areas where you can just look at the water. Yeah. So that's why I saw the Palm River. The same way I'm night rocking bulls by next door, I used to work for the gender yeah. factor. I mean, I think that gets at, to me, like, there's, like, what if the beginning of action is just curiosity or, like, perplexity? Like, what is this thing? You know, how, how do I meet it? You know, it, it doesn't begin in like some really big nonsense. Well, here's another version of that, and I guess this is my brand of um, environmental action, um, is before you can 
um, change something for the better, and you say this river is dirty and it needs to be cleaned up, or the birds need to be given a better habitat, or whatever it is, you need to actually care about it yourself. Yeah. And that care comes from exactly what you guys just experienced, which is direct human experience. And so it's discovering something in a zillion different ways that you discover it, and then learning to love it and feel connected to it. And then from that comes the desire to change it. And I think so much of the basis of our, our work uh, on really every front is about developing that immediate kind of connection and compassion to things, whether it's the wood that's going to go into the boat, the, the water, the plants, the birds, the fish, and, and then from there, um, learning what to do about that, about that love and that care. I think yeah. one of the sort of problems that I sort of grew up seeing in the environmental movement in particular was all about assuming that everyone loved what the environmentalists loved as much as they did. Going, so, you know, come and save this and keep this from happening. And people are like, well, why do I care? Yeah, like, and that's what I think is so interesting to us about the boat. Like, the boat is very specific. You know, it was a big, it was a big power boat where you're a foot more off the water where you don't get splashed, you don't have to push it in or out. It can't crack or break. You're, there's no, like, at that point you're not participating. You're just moving through an environment. And, it, yeah. and it's one of the reasons we build the kinds of boats we build and we use them the way we use them. We're not a crew team, which is a race. And you can, yeah. I mean, it's wonderful stuff, but you're going to be on a bike or in your legs or or in a rowboat and you're racing. And that's what you're focusing on. Our boats are designed the way we use them is designed to get out and explore. What was so interesting with what I was asking Javier, and Javier, I'd love you for you to jump in. But I, first, I was asking you, like, so what? You know, what's 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 next for you? And you said, oh, I'm going to go to carpentry school. And, and I thought to myself, wow, that you know, so so tying that into how we were going to the wetlands and what, what is in the future for rocking the boat. It felt like to me, like, since you built a boat,